Okay, everyone, it's 9 or 2 a.m., so let's get going. I'm excited about today's content and our guest speaker. But before we start today, let's cover a couple of housekeeping items that we need to keep in mind for today's presentation. First of all, this webinar is being recorded. After we complete today's content and the recording is processed, if you're registered to attend, then you'll receive a link to watch the recording. If there's anything that you missed or that you'd like to refer back to, simply click on the link from that email to watch this webinar on demand or forward the webinar to your colleagues. Next, we'll be taking questions at the end of today's presented content, but you can ask your questions at any time by entering them into the Q&A box located at the bottom of your screen. We encourage you to ask questions as they come to you, and we should have plenty of time for Q&A at the end. Finally, today we're joined today by Jen from Breaking Barriers, who will be providing live captions throughout the webinar. To follow along, just click the CC or Live Transcript button at the bottom of your Zoom window and click Full View Transcript. Or you can use the link that we just posted in the Zoom chat window, and you'll see that stream in a separate browser tab. So let's go ahead and have each of our uh, each of our panelists today introduce themselves, starting with me. So my name is Liz Wong Jones, and I am a principal developer advocate at Honeycomb for the site reliability engineering and observability communities. And I'm excited today to be joined by Luca. Hello, everyone. My name is Luca Sun. I'm a consultant here at Forrester's Total Economic Impact Practice. Excellent. So what are we going to be talking about today, Luca? Today, well, Liz will give us an overview of what is Honeycomb, and then I'm going to jump into discussing what is a TEI and how is that going to be relevant to you and your organization. Next, I'll talk about the research that was conducted and then jump into some of the customer journeys and outcomes that we uncovered by speaking to existing Honeycomb customers. And then I'll finish off with some high level study results. Excellent. Well, let's get into it. So just to orient everyone who may not be familiar, Honeycomb is a product that is built to solve some of the challenges of complex software. We live in a world where we have many, many microservices and we have cloud native architectures that, and all these things have increased the scale of development teams and their velocity, but they also have made it more turbulent in production and caused challenges for resilience and for reliability. So Honeycomb's mission is to solve this problem by enabling people to answer questions that they couldn't answer before. So we're not just a tool that is for tracing or for logging or for metrics. We're a tool that helps synthesize all of these things together to enable people to understand how are the problems in my system arising? Which users are especially impacted and how do I get things back to working for them as quickly as possible? Honeycomb is a tool, as I mentioned, that is not something that is uh, a, a, a tool that is only for metrics or only for logs or only for tracing. But instead, we think that it's something that enables people to achieve observability, that enables people to ask any question and answer any question about their system using a combination of techniques from the APM logging and, and monitoring spaces. We enable people to, at development time, have higher confidence in their code as they're writing it and get a better sense of how it's going to run as they get it through their production pipeline. We enable people to have shorter feedback cycles and to move faster and to get visibility into how their deploy processes are going. And finally, we enable developers to validate and understand based off of actually testing in production, how users are actually using those features and to be able to resolve any issues should they arise. In our view, Honeycomb is an ideal solution to the problems of observability because we enable people to actually properly investigate using granular data and answer their questions in real time and to get these answers that they need in order to make their business performant and to make their developers happy. So Honeycomb is a tool that really helps replace traditional tooling such as monitoring APM or logging techniques with a solution that's the best of all of these worlds that enables you both to have a schema-less uh, ingest that's flexible, as well as lightning fast querying, rather than having to make compromises on one or the other. So that's what Honeycomb does in a nutshell, but 
that wouldn't be anything unless we are having customers without, uh, unless we had customers who are seeing results. So let's talk about the total economic impact of Honeycomb. All right, so what is the total economic impact? Well, let's jump into that. So when talking about business case justifications for technology investments, we understand that decision makers nowadays need something that goes beyond your typical total cost of ownership or even ROI analysis. And so that's where the total economic impact comes in. On the next slide. Um, so total economic impact or TEI for short, as that's a little bit of a mouthful, um, is a methodology that Forrester has been using for nearly 20 years to help our clients justify technology investments. Um, the TEI is a proven, consistent, and repeatable way to measure that technology impact. And we look at that through four key categories or pillars. The first is the benefits. So what are the positive things that happen to your business when making a technology investment, whether that's cost savings, um, efficiency lifts, and any other business impacts? Second, we measure the costs, but not just the subscription or licensing cost. We talk about uh, and uncover the costs associated with planning, implementation, and ongoing maintenance. And then that third part is flexibility. What are the future possibilities enabled by making an investment decision today? And then lastly, we uncover the risks, or you can think of them as the barriers to realizing the full potential of your investment. And a key methodology, or key component to this methodology rather, is that we speak to existing customers with their experiences in a measured way and use that data that we find as a basis of our analysis. And ultimately, we want you to be able to take the results that you hear today and then begin to think about how you can use that for a case study of your own for your organization. And on to the next slide, um, a couple of things to note. Uh, this is a commission study. Forrester, is a consult Forrester Consulting is an independent practice. We're not here to endorse Honeycomb, but we are here to say, hey, we spoke to these customers and this is the total economic, economic impact that we saw. All right, and then moving on. So how did we do this? Let's talk about how the research was conducted. To begin with, we started by interviewing four customers using Honeycomb across a variety of sizes, as well as several industries. Starting from largest to smallest, we spoke to a financial services organization that had about 1,200 Honeycomb users in their existing state, uh, which is about 40% of their entire 3,000 engineering team. And they communicate hopes to bring that up to 100% of their engineering team. And we can talk about that as we go on. Uh, we talked to a financial technology organization that had 90 Honeycomb users, which comprised of 75% of their engineering team. We talked to a high tech organization with 83 Honeycomb users. And then lastly, a smallest organization had 12 Honeycomb users, but were fully dedicated to a site reliability engineering team. So let's talk about the before state, the prior state, the legacy state. So before Honeycomb, uh, customers utilized competitor observability solutions along with the traditional monitoring, logging, and tracing. And they also shared some of the pain points that they experienced before their investment in Honeycomb. Uh, the first one we have here uh, is the difficulty responding to production issues. Of course, response times did not meet business and customer requirements. Developers often spent hours juggling between disparate systems to find root causes for issues. And along that same vein, there was low cardinality data and just insufficient insights from telemetry data. Uh, similarly, there was an inability to catch incidents before they became critical. Again, having low fidelity data, inability to find bottlenecks. Um, we also did hear that developer time was definitely reactive limiting innovation. So when it came to identifying and resolving issues, developers were firefighting on their heels, limiting the time that they can spend um, proactively solving issues and developing new features. We also heard that scaling people to become power users was an issue. In other words, interview customers told us that knowledge and capabilities were at risk of being siloed uh, to a smaller group of users, limiting the ability to utilize a wider range of employees to do this investigation work. 
And then lastly, uh, there was some difficulty managing both numerous and expensive legacy solutions. And going on to that uh, investment objective. So we also want to understand why customers were looking to invest and adopt in Honeycomb. And the first thing that we heard was that customers wanted something that can support their digital transformation, modernization, and a tool that can support the complexity of a modern stack. Uh, customers wanted to decrease the total cost of ownership of other tools. Uh, of course, decrease uh, mean time to resolution rates. We did hear a lot about customers being excited about SLOs, service level objectives, to better understand production issues, um, understand customer impact, and improve service reliability. Uh, we heard that customers also wanted to improve employee experience, uh, improve the engineer enge engineering time and the frustration that can be involved with their legacy state. Okay, and on to the next slide. So that's what we heard from customers, a little bit of the customer journey before their investment on the account. Based on all their experiences, uh, the data and their characteristics of those interviewed customers, we created a composite organization. And so you can think of a composite organization as a representative company in which we assign a financial model to benefits, costs, and ROI. So diving into some of those characteristics, our composite organization is a North American-based company with global operations serving other business clients with about $500 million in annual revenue. And when we zoom into some of the more specific characteristics, we look at the number of engineers who are using Honeycomb in this organization. And that's starting with 300 engineers total uh, in year one, scaling to 400 in year two and 500 in year three. This is a three year analysis. And the reason that scales like that is it mirrors what we heard from customers that once they implemented Honeycomb, they start to see a lot of value and wanted to expand that to as many developers and engineers as possible. And then I'll skip down here to the previous state, like what we heard in customer interviews, this composite organization is coming from legacy monitoring, uh, logging, tracing, observability tools. So let's start with the kicker, the final results of the study, and then we can work our way back from there. But based on our analysis, the composite organization experiences a three-year present value return on investment of 296% with benefits totaling to $5.9 million and a net present value of $4.4 million. Now, we measure all costs and benefits in present value to reflect that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. And then the last point here is that net present value is simply the total benefits minus the total costs. All right, and I really love this quote by the chief solutions architect in the financial services organization. So I'll read it out. Uh, Honeycomb gives us context across our workloads from any entry point. It's an incredible ability that lets you answer any questions and gives you goals that go beyond incident response. So let's talk about um, what were the exact outcomes that Honeycomb customers received? So within that 296% ROI are five core quantified benefit categories that I'm gonna be spending the rest of today's presentation walking through. Within the actual study that we created, um, we broke down these calculations in transparent, easy to understand and apply to your own organization framework. And so the hope is that you get a hands, get your hands on a copy of the study so that you can begin uh, creating your own business case for your own organization. But for now, I'll just hit on the highlights of some of our findings. And starting with, I'll be talking about the increased incremental revenue, uh, cost savings from faster incident response, cost savings by preventing incidents altogether. We did hear uh, uh, and quantify avoided employee, ch employee churn cost savings. And then lastly, we'll dive into some of the details about the cost savings that were a result of decreasing consumption and legacy solutions. Okay, so starting with our first of five 
main quantified benefit categories. One of the most significant outcomes shared by customers was the incremental uh, increase in revenue of $1.9 million for our composite organization. But for interviewed customers using Honeycomb, uh, this was essential in reducing revenue leakage that can be a result of production system degradation and outages. So here uh, you'll see in this slide and the next few slides, I've listed out a few of the key metrics and data points from our financial framework, but please read the full study to see more details. Um, so for the composite organization, we assume that 60% of annual revenue is dependent on those production systems. Um, of that 15%, uh, that uh, of that, sorry, 15% is susceptible to permanent loss of revenue, or we call revenue leakage. With Honeycomb, we found that customers significantly improved their uptime, they improved services, and were able to recapture that revenue by up to by 15% in year one, and 25% in year three. And that scales as a composite organization increases adoption of Honeycomb within their organization. Let's talk about how one might achieve that and why it really matters that Honeycomb really changes that lever with regard to revenue leakage. So if you are a company that is operating a B2B business or even a B2C business, your customers care about reliability. They care both that your services are responsive and fast and that they can access them at all. If you have a lack of reliability, whether it be your service being incredibly slow or it being flat out down, there are two potential areas that your customers can churn. One area is in the short term is that if someone is trying to give you money or process or transact revenue through your system, you are not going to receive revenue for the period that you are down. Additionally, there's a longer term damage to user trust that your brand will suffer and that customers may churn in the longer term if they cannot actually trust your service, they'll go to a competitor instead. The way that Honeycomb avoids this revenue churn is by having your customers experience less outages and therefore to trust your services more. That if you're able to quickly detect outages with service level objectives and triggers, and if you're able to resolve your outages faster by using Honeycomb's advanced diagnostic features, you're going to be able to restore service much faster and your customers will transact more and they're going to rely upon your service more. So that's how we think that we were able to have these customers talk to Forrester and say that this was an area that they saw improvement. These are the functionality areas in within Honeycomb that we think they're using to achieve these results. All right, our second benefit that we quantified was cost savings of $2 million from faster incident response. So with Honeycomb, customers decreased mean time to detect and resolve issues. They improved query response times, found bottlenecks quicker, and reduced time on call, to give a few examples. Um, developer productivity also improved as a result from information sharing. So in the composite organization, we assume of all the developers and engineers using Honeycomb, about 20% of them, or 20% of their working hours are actually spent within Honeycomb. Developers then reduce the time to uh, respond to all level of incidents by 15% using Honeycomb as compared to what they were using in their prior environment. And then lastly of this calculation, we assume that 50% productivity recapture right here in the bottom, that 50% of the regained hours from that improved productivity and speed in which to respond to incidents is reapplied to other tasks. So let's talk a little bit about how this actually happens in practice. The Stripe Developer Coefficient Survey says that 17 hours out of every week of developer time are spent on end plan break fix work or spent on on-call, things that are reactive rather than things that you plan to do that are moving your business forward. When you use Honeycomb, your developers benefit, not just your users. So when developers are able to find solutions, not just to outages and on-call, but also to subtle bugs and other kind of break fix tasks they may be doing, it takes them minutes, not hours or days. And that time that they save, they can spend then on moving your business forward and working on proactive features rather than having to spend all of their time doing break fix. There are other areas of productivity, as Luca mentioned, that are also impacted, where if you're having a distributed microservice environment, 
if your engineers are having to change tools or talk to other people because they can't understand the data that's coming out of another system, that can be a real drag on productivity. So when everyone is using the same tooling, then you wind up spending less time context switching and you spend less time pointing fingers or having blame because everyone is able to see the same data in the same tool and they're able to get results much faster and get back to developing features. All right, so the third benefit we quantified was cost savings of 683,000 by preventing incidents altogether. And so in addition to labor savings realized from faster incident response, we found that customers were eliminated or prevented incidents altogether by addressing them before they became an issue using SLOs and features like bubble up. Um, one financial services organization told us that they eliminated 40% of severe level incidents using Honeycomb. So in our composite organization, there's 750 critical application incidents per year. With Honeycomb, the composite organization reduces that number by 20% in year one, scaling up to a total of 40% in year three. So let's talk about how the outages can be avoided entirely rather than just having the outages take less time to resolve. The way that Honeycomb helps people avoid outages entirely is by reducing the severity of incidents so that people have the, you know, yes, you are going to ship bugs into production occasionally, but there's a large difference between spending five minutes fixing the bug after you introduce it versus spending two or three hours on a war room call because it reached production and has resulted in a sub-zero incident three days afterwards. So with Honeycomb, people do this in several ways. First of all, by enabling developers to immerse themselves in production from the very beginning, they're able to better understand the steady state and how the changes that they make are going to impact production, causing an increased safety of the changes that they're making rather than people being surprised when their code reaches production days or months later. Honeycomb also enables people to quickly catch those bugs, which as I said, it's a lot easier to resolve a bug before it becomes a critical incident if you're looking at it right after it rolls into production. Thirdly, features like Honeycomb Bubble Up enable people to do effective canary analysis so that people can catch regressions and understand user behavior at 1% deployed rather than at 100% deployed once things have become too big to fail. Finally, Honeycomb enables teams to target their uh, performance improvements and target their reliability uh, improvements. And that really reduces the severity and frequency of outages because teams are focusing their energies on making the system more resilient in ways that matter so that less uh, break fix time needs to be spent in the longer term. You're meeting. For, <laughs> of course. For our fourth quantified benefit, uh, we measured the cost savings of avoided employee churn. We heard that Honeycomb uplifts the employee experience for its users. And so in legacy, environments, a common theme was that customers had siloed groups of what we called hero developers with specialized knowledge that were stuck dealing with overwhelming amount of alert noise, needing to swivel between disparate systems, spending hours on calls with high interruptions. After investing in Honeycomb, organizations broke down those silos, improved alert fatigue, reduced those call interruptions, improved insights, boosted more employee morale, and then ultimately we're able to see a reduction in employee churn. For a composite organization, there's about a 15% churn rate for developers and engineers before Honeycomb. And with Honeycomb, that's reduced by 1.5 percentage points. And then lastly, we take a 50% uh, cost of employee churn multiplier to get employees up to speed and productive. So how is it that Honeycomb affects this cultural change? because this is definitely a component that you may not have seen in other total economic impact reports. Our viewpoint is that Honeycomb creates a team that fosters a positive culture, that fosters a culture where developers burn out less and where the cost to hire labor goes down. If you are shipping reliably and on time and able to see the results of your changes reaching production, it improves your sense of impact as an engineer. 
engineers thrive when they have uh, when they have autonomy and impact, and when they see a path towards career progression. So when you are able to see how customers are using your feature and verify that it's performant and kind of get that tight feedback loop, that makes you less likely to feel disgruntled or discouraged and makes you less likely to leave the organization. Similarly, if you spend less of your time firefighting, that means that you're going to enjoy better work-life balance and that you're less likely to either need to go on medical leave or that you're less likely to leave the company in search of a company that does not have hellish on-call. So avoiding hellish on-call is a primary source of employee churn for organizations that put developers on-call. So when you do less firefighting, it really moves that needle. Also, as we mentioned earlier, there's kind of this thing of eliminating the idea of kind of the hero developer who debugs everything, right? That if every engineer on your team is brought to the level of your best debugger so that all of us are able to debug together better, that means that everyone has a better understanding of production. And the more you understand production and develop an understanding of how your systems work, the more senior you get, the more autonomy that you feel as an engineer, because you know how your systems are going to work and you're learning continuously rather than just stuck in the uh, feature lines all day. And finally, it cannot be overstated that if you, uh, if you are a organization that practices modern software delivery, including continuous delivery, observability, all these practices, that engineers will hear about the positive experiences of those in your team and want to work in your organization. So by up-leveling your team, it creates an environment where people stay and where the talent gets better and better, rather than having this constant drain of talent out of your organization. All right, and lastly, let's get into our fifth and final quantified benefit of this total economic impact report. And that is cost savings of $442,000 from a decrease in legacy solution dependence. So while we didn't hear that customers fully replaced legacy solutions altogether at the time of our conversation, we did hear that after implementing Honeycomb, customers decreased consumption and licensing of expensive competitor solutions. Um, so here, financial services organizations shared that they were able to reduce the renewal rate of their one of their solutions by 40%, saving them $700,000, and we're hoping to completely avoid renewing for the next year. And so for the composite organization, we take the total spend of all observability monitoring and logging tools and solutions, and with Honeycomb, the composite organization reduces the consumption and the support costs uh, by 10% in year one and by up to 30% in year three as the composite organization again adopts Honeycomb and it uses it across a greater number of users. So let's talk about why Honeycomb displaces those uh, traditional tools. So the thing that we find that kind of justifies the decrease in spend you know, year on year on year is this idea that as developers experience Honeycomb, they turn to Honeycomb as their first port of call for debugging and that they stop using the tools that are older, that are expensive and don't give them the answers that they need. When you have a solution that is you know, based on logging or based off of custom metrics, it winds up being very, very high in cost because there's a cost to store a high cardinality of many, many metrics that are pre-aggregated. And there's a cost to storing the volume of logs and to searching and waiting for the results to come back on those logs. So Honeycomb's approach to tracing and structured, uh, structured spans that encompass logging allow you to get rid of logs and custom metrics and instead to be able to see everything in one place using Honeycomb's technology. Additionally, for users that are interested in traditional infrastructure metrics, the Honeycomb metrics tool set, which was just generally uh, made generally available yesterday, is a feature that allows people to get rid of their metrics tools entirely, because if they no longer need custom metrics, having moved those into attributes on spans, and if they no longer need infrastructure metrics, having moved them in Honeycomb metrics, there's really no reason for people to retain that metrics tool any longer. So this idea of kind of having separate tools with difficult developer experience and developer uh, and, and developer ergonomics, right? Like you get off of using the traditional logs, traces, and metrics 
separate tool sets. Instead, you're able to consolidate that all into Honeycomb and then over time, turn off the data uh, spigot that is flowing into those legacy tools and reduce that cost. But there are a couple of other benefits that are also present that Forrester was not able to quantify, but we still feel are important to discuss. Exactly that. So jumping into it, we heard that Honeycomb helps accelerate development and deployment, allowing them to uh, ship more features faster while also reducing rollbacks. Another common theme was that Honeycomb did help organizations better allocate where they invest their resources times, especially where it matters to customers. We also heard that um, improving system uptime not just affected external applications, but there's a huge impact to internal users using applications. Um, we did hear that using Honeycomb definitely improves customer experience. Again, for all the reasons mentioned, um, SLO is driving better business results, better able to allocate their resources to more efficient um, and productive, productive tasks, and solving customer problems faster. And then here, we did hear that customers shared that their account relationships with Honeycomb were productive and lent itself to customer success. And then finally, we heard that using Honeycomb does help avoid a, a vendor lock-in. And specifically, the way that we avoid vendor lock-in is by embracing open standards like open telemetry that enable customers to both kind of tee their data to multiple data providers, including Honeycomb, which allows them to migrate into Honeycomb quickly or off of Honeycomb quickly. But what's kind of the big bottom line? Like what, what should people be taking away from this, Luca? All right, well, I will certainly give that, but let's also unpack some of the costs that we, un, uh, that we discovered talking to customers. So we start off by quantifying the implementation and ongoing costs. So for implementation, that includes internal labor as well as several hours of training for Honeycomb users. And then ongoing costs is a couple hours a month of maintenance. And then we get to our biggest cost, which is the Honeycomb subscription cost of $1.2 million. Again, this is over three years. And then finally, um, we have our financial summary. So I hope you enjoyed this overview. This is where we're wrapping things up. And I urge you to go ahead and read the full force or total economic impact study to see how your organization can drive a 296% ROI and a $4.4 million net present value. Thank you. Yep, so that is it for the uh, prepared content that we have for you today, but we very much welcome you to give us your questions. So we already have a number of good questions that we should go through. Um, so again, as a reminder, if you do have questions, use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to submit your question. We'd also encourage you to have a look uh, at, the, at the full at TEI report, which you can download at the link that will be shared afterwards. Um, unfortunately, I know that you can't click on my screen to, uh, to, to get the, uh, the URL. And there are also a couple of other webinars and presentations you should be aware of, including a workshop that I am teaching later this month. So the first question that we have is, it's really interesting that Honeycomb not only decreases time of detection and resolution, but also decreases the number of incidents. What features in Honeycomb specifically contributed to your customer's ability to reduce severe incidents? I think, Luca, that's a question for you as to what you heard from our customers. Yeah, I can take uh, the first part of that. Um, one of the customers cited that they were created what they called burn alert triggers, and they used SLOs and bubble up features that would notify their teams of production issues 30 minutes before it ever happens so that they can resolve it and completely avoid it. Yes, that definitely makes sense that customers do not have severe incidents if you have not uh, incurred significant customer impact when, you're, when you catch them or resolve them. That goes back to that earlier point, I think that we raised earlier around time to detect and time to resolve. That if your service level objective starts burning, Honeycomb burn alerts let you know. And then the bubble up feature shows you where it's burning, why it's burning so that you can roll that back and not have to wake up your entire team. Okay, we've got another question that's come in, which is, uh, 
The cost savings you mentioned from condensing tooling sounds amazing, but what advice do you have if you have many employees that are already uh, using traditional APM flows? How do you get started moving to Honeycomb? So I think I should probably take that one first. Um, so I think the way that I would answer that is first move to open telemetry, right? Like that lock, lack of vendor lock-in is important and you're going to want that regardless of kind of which vendor you, you take for your modern observability approach. Once you have that adopted, then you're able to start sending the data over, right? Like it's almost like the Pepsi versus Coke challenge, right? Like you can really show people how Honeycomb helps people get answers faster than traditional APM tools. And then after that, you can start migrating more and more of your effort to the open telemetry and Honeycomb first. So that I think is probably the best adoption path towards getting people going with Honeycomb. And we certainly do offer free trials and other resources to help you get started along that journey. And I think Luca, you had yeah. some customers that were able to speak to their ease of onboarding experience. I'd, I'd like to add on to that. Well, we didn't ask customers specifically what kind of implementation advice they would give. Um, I do have a quote in front of me from a financial services organization saying that uh, using Honeycomb or adopting Honeycomb was the fastest adoption that they've seen for any solution. That, and if it wasn't implemented yet, again, that was the 40%, um, it's, still, it's in the backlog of other developers. And so that's a consistent theme that we heard across all four interviews was realizing the value and wanting to adopt as quickly as possible. Yeah, that's super great. And I think that that is one of the risks that is covered in the Forrester model is how much cost in terms of developer time does it take to implement? And I'm really glad that you included that because I think that helps give a well-rounded picture of, you know, yes, there is some initial work to instrument. There is some initial work to get the data flowing, but kind of once you do that, then it is relatively hands-off. Cool. Um, Let's see whether any other questions have come in. Once again, you can use the Q&A box in the bottom of your screen if you have any other questions that you would like Luca and myself to answer. All right, I am not seeing any further questions come in. So I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up the webinar here. And we very much encourage you to go visit the Honeycomb website um, and particularly to go ahead and download the Forrester uh, report in order to understand how the uh, total economic impact of Honeycomb uh, resulted. Thank you very much for joining us today, and we appreciate uh, your attention and hope to see you at another Honeycomb event. Thank you, everyone.